Hey everyone, so Project Overkill has been up and running for a few weeks now and I've just been doing some capacity testing and just making sure that there's no bugs in the system. Right now all of the battery strings are at 46.6 volts and all of the cells are within one millivolt, so 0 .001 volts. I've gone through and powered some different appliances in the house. I ran uh, the entertainment center with the TV, the, the DVR and all of that. I did the dehumidifier, which has a really, really big surge load. I powered a air fryer, a 10,000 BTU window air conditioner unit. And so far, I mean, I've powered several of those at once. We powered the AC, the air fryer, and the entertainment center all at once. And this thing, no issues. The batteries were drawn maybe 10 amps from each battery string, so they're not struggling. So far, it's going well. I did find a quirk with this, and I'll show that to you now. So as you can see here, you can select the battery type and charge voltage uh, with the dial down over here, this little white dial. And if you go through the different numbers, it's different types of batteries and different general setups. So originally I had this on battery setting number three, which is lithium iron phosphate. And that's for an AS battery, which you can tell by these voltages, it's multiplied by four for 48 volt. But if you look at the, the nominal voltages for charging, it's a 48 volt setup at 8s but we're since we're running a 7s there was the possibility of overcharging this so i monitor the charging cycles every single time to avoid any type of overcharge situation which would be bad but let me show you this indicator over here real quick and then i'll explain to you why this was an issue for me right, so as you can see there is a selector here and there's an arrow i know that's kind of hard to see uh but right now it's set at number one and that was originally at number three like I said earlier and what I found is when this is on setting number three the low voltage disconnect and the low voltage alarm is different so let me show you the manual really quick so here under protections it says the low battery voltage trip point can be customized from defaulted value of 10 volts DC to 10.5 through switch one on the dip switch so I was fully expecting this to shut off when it hit 42-ish volts, maybe down to 40. I know it's not super accurate, but I was expecting it to get to somewhere around that. And what ended up happening was there was an alarm for low voltage at about 48 volts, which was concerning. And then it actually shut down at 46 volts. So I contacted Franklin at Sigineer and he asked if I could try it on sealed lead acid batteries, but I didn't have those available to try it on and then I was down here trying to figure this out making sure there was no obvious issues with anything and I tried switching the battery selector on that that dial and sure enough it fired right back up didn't have any issues after that and it discharged all the way down to 40 volts and shut itself off so at 46 volts with a 16s not an 8s with a 16s battery uh, that will give you a voltage per cell of 2.875. So it's kind of cool that they incorporated a bit of a safety buffer into that because you can discharge lithium iron phosphate down to 2.5 volts per cell safely, but there's not very much capacity there. So it's kind of cool to see that they put that in there because once you hit 2.875, I mean, even with this setup, it's about 12 kilowatt hours, you get a few more minutes of runtime from that 2.875 to the two and a half. I've, I've done it on other setups before and there's very little below that flat curve. Once it hits that knee and that voltage curve starts to drop off, it, it does not take long at all. So I, I like that they did that. The problem with that, with this setup is because it's a 14S and not a 16S, uh, the cutoff was at 3.28 volts per cell, which is most of the capacity. I mean, these things just got started as far as doing a discharge test and they were already shutting off. So I had to figure out what was going on with this, whether it was a warranty issue with this because there was a board in here that was malfunctioning or something else going on. Uh, the BMSs weren't shutting off, I verified that. And figuring out that it was just that, that battery type selector was a relief because 46 volts at a 14S battery is 3.28 volts per cell, but discharging down to 40 volts per cell Discharging down to 40 volts at a 14S battery takes us similar to a similar voltage of 2.85 volts per cell, which I still like because it gives you that safety buffer. Let's 
see if that made sense. I know what you're thinking, blah blah blah, when are you going to start powering some stuff? Well, I have my handy dandy kilowatt meter here, so we're going to plug in a 10,000 BTU window air conditioner and see how long it'll power it. I know from the previous tests and everything that this has about a 48 watt standby draw, so we're going to calculate that into our calculations. And then once we get done with our overall capacity test with the kilowatt meter, we're going to ditch this and plug in a fridge, a stand-up freezer, and the sump pump over here. And then we're just going to let it run and see how long it would power those appliances in an actual power outage on its own before needing to be recharged through a generator or anything like that. Anything like that? What else, what else is there besides a generator? Solar panels, I guess. So I am topping off the batteries right now. There's about 225 watts going into each of the five battery strings, which is right around 1200 watts or so. Uh, I'll throw the math up on the screen. And then I plugged in the kilowatt meter over here and we have our extension cord ran upstairs for the window unit. So once this tops off, we will be unplugging the AC power from the unit to simulate a power outage and this will be powered only through the batteries. I'll be back with you in a split second to you but a little while for me. Alright so we just finished charging and now I'm going to unplug the AC and turn this on. We have the air conditioner plugged in upstairs and we're gonna let it run. Alright Okay, so we just turned the air conditioner on, the fan is running right now, the compressor hasn't kicked in, so it looks like we're drawing about 0.6 amps from each one of our battery strings, and our kilowatt meter says we're drawing 116 watts. So once that kicks on, it should jump up quite a bit. Okay, so the compressor finally turned on on the air conditioner, we're drawing 180 watts or so from each one of the batteries and our kilowatt meter is reading out at 838 watts so our fan on here kicked on as well uh, I, I still think that's load based i don't think it's temperature based because it kicked on immediately as soon as that load kicked on the fan turned on so that's kind of cool we have 3.7 amps 3.8 amps ish coming out of each one of the battery strings it is september 7th at 502 p.m so we'll just let it run and see how long it goes. Our, our screen here is reading out that we're at a 32% load, which is about right for 850 watts for a uh, 3000 watt continuous inverter. So we just crossed the 24 hour mark. Our battery voltage is at 46 volts and we've drawn 3.14 kilowatt hours from the batteries so far according to our kilowatt meter and I'll get a close-up of the screens right now so you can see all of the individual cell voltages. Alright, so 46 volts and our high cell is at 3.285 volts and our low cell for this string is at 3.280 so we're within 5 millivolts right now and so they're staying fairly well balanced. So even though our kilowatt meter says we've drawn 3.15 kilowatt hours from the batteries, I want to include the parasitic load of the inverter itself. So 48 watts times 24 hours gives us 1,152 watt hours just to keep this thing online. So when we add the two together we come out with 4.2, 4.3-ish kilowatt hours. So far everything's been running well, no issues, no alarms, no beeping, so we are just gonna let it keep going. Alright, it's September 10th at about 6 p.m. so we just cra uh, we just crossed the 72 hour mark we are about to die so we have an alarm here showing that we have a low voltage situation going on the voltage readouts here are at 39.7 so according to this it should have already shut off however our screen over here is reading out at 40.4 volts and our kilowatt meter is at 8.4 kilowatt hours at 73 hours with a 48 watt consumption idle consumption uh, that comes out to whatever I just put up on the screen but it's over three kilowatt hours that we burn just to keep this thing online uh, which is a lot it just shut off that's off 
these are all at zero. Our screen stay, uh, stays on, but you can see that all of our LEDs up here have shut off. The alarm and the, the online light here has shut off. So that's it. So 8.4 kilowatt hours out of the batteries on the kilowatt meter side of things. So 8.4 kilowatt hours out of the inverter and then 3.3-ish kilowatt hours of consumption on the inverter to keep it online for 73 hours straight. And that comes to a grand total of that. So as you can see here, our BMSs are reading out at 39.7 volts. Our high cell over here is reading 2.88, our low cell is reading 2.74, and the average is 2.83, and this says we still have 6.8 amp hours left in the battery uh, at 13% of capacity left, and that's because we didn't re uh, run it all the way down to 2.5 volts. However, I don't think there's still 6 amp hours of energy left in the battery. So we didn't quite make it to 12 kilowatt hours. It uh, stopped at 11.9. However, when I charged this, it was still charging at 225 watts per battery string. If I were to have reduced that charge current and really made sure to trickle charge these batteries all the way up to the top at 3.65 volts, we probably would have pulled a little bit more energy from these because they settled pretty quick. The voltages dropped off fairly quickly after I removed the charge current. Um, and the fact that we don't discharge all the way down to 2.5 volts probably has a everything to do with why we didn't quite make it to 12 kilowatt hours. All right, everyone. So we didn't quite make it to 12 kilowatt hours. However, due to the limited voltage range that we were working with, as well as the fact that the way I measured the parasitic losses from the inverter isn't very scientific. My guess is that when the air conditioner kicks on, there's probably more energy consumed by the inverter when it's actually inverting DC power into AC. So I didn't calculate that into it, and I would have to measure from the input side of the inverter with a column meter or some kind of Hall effect sensor to get an accurate wattage reading from that. So without doing that, uh, I just kind of, really I shot low. We probably did pull more than the 11.9 that I've stated earlier in the video, but I'm willing to accept that because I'm shooting for real world results. And in the next video, I plan on hooking up a fridge, freezer, and sump pump. Uh, and basically, I want to try doing with the inverter on, as I did in this video with the 48 watts of consumption uh, nonstop. And I also want to try with the power saver mode, where when the inverter senses a load kicking on, it will basically wake up. I have noticed that some things don't like to turn that on, such as fans that have uh, like touch button uh, switches and things like that. But if you have a hard switch like the sump pump does, it always turns on every single time. So it's a closed circuit when that happens. I think we're going to get a lot more runtime out of it without that 48 watts running nonstop with the, with the inverter's parasitic loss. So that'll be the next video, but for now I'm going to call the 11.9 kilowatt hour official number a success. Uh, I'm happy with that. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.